In the last month, while everyone's been fixated on Bitcoin and talking about the ETF, the real explosion has actually happened in the gaming coins. So this is a one month chart or one month uh, view of all the gaming coins. And you can see that the real action has been here in the gaming coins. You've got um, a Jewel up 642%. You've got Sidus up 341%. You've got all these games going up in the hundreds of percent. There's no doubt that the real bull run, the, the real bull run, the real bull market is going to happen in these gaming coins. And if the data from this report is correct, we will see gaming leading the, the, the crypto bull market. So the, the, the idea is that if this is correct, you want to be well positioned for this bull market. So what I did today was I started to get my friend uh, Yatsu on with us because he's very, very, very in touch with gaming, with metaverse, with NFTs. He's, of course, the chairman of Animoca Brands. And today we're going to dig into the top projects, the top ecosystems that he believes are going to pump in this bull market. You ready for that? You DJ enough for that? All right, let's do it. Today's a crazy, crazy, crazy day because it's a day after our company Christmas event. So you can you can imagine that there's no one here and everyone's hungover. And I'm doing two shows. I'm doing a show for you guys right now in the game because on this channel, we're going to be talking to you only about gaming tokens and the best gaming tokens and metaverse tokens out there. And then we're going to go on to the main channel and we're going to do another show where we talk about altcoins that are exploding. So we've got a lot to do together today. Um, by the way, you are watching us on our brand new channel. It's called In The Game. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel because this is where we're going to bring you gaming alpha, uh, metaverse alpha, NFT alpha. This is the place to get it. It's the only place to get it. And we bring you a lot, a lot, a lot of content on this channel. So subscribe to this channel. At the end of the show, one lucky subscriber is going to walk away with a prize. I'll, I'll give that to you guys. <clears throat> at the end, um, but we've got a lot to get through today because I'm sure we're going to get a whole lot of alpha here today. Before we start the alpha though, just remember that this is a Friday banter. The Friday banter is of course brought to you by our, I think our best sponsor, which is NordVPN. And I've said to you guys a million times before, if you are in crypto, you need to be using a VPN. Don't take chances, specifically in the bull market. You're going to make a lot of money in this bull market. The last thing that you want to do in this bull market is lose the money that you make to a hack, to a compromise, to, to, a malicious, um, to a malicious actor, you need to get a VPN. You need to mask your IP address. You need to close the way in for all these. And also the main thing is you don't want exchanges knowing your IP address or anybody knowing your IP address for that matter because if they know your IP address, they know exactly where you are. All you need to do to protect yourself is very simple. Get NordVPN. You pay less than $3 a month. Okay, so let's just look at what the, the pricing options are. $2.88 a month and you protect yourself and you protect your crypto. And you don't only get the VPN, you get a whole lot of other things. You get um, uh, a password manager like LastPass, you get uh, file protections on, on with a private cloud, all this for $2.80 a month. And at the same time, you are supporting us and you are supporting our new channel and you are helping us bring you more of this quality content. Listen guys, we've got a lot to talk about today. I wanna know what, I wanna know first of all, the big question for me is, why has gaming all of a sudden exploded? Why is it that after this entire bear market, when so many things have happened, why is it that the majority of the funding is actually going to gaming projects? So what is it about gaming projects? Then I want to know what chains these gaming projects are going to be built on. Then I want to know um, um, what ecosystems are going to benefit. And I've got a whole lot of other questions for, for Yat. So without any further ado, now that the formalities are all out the way, let's get my friend Yat on. Yat, how are you, my friend? Very good. It's a great pleasure to be here again. Looking it's, forward uh, to our chat. By my calculation, it is now 10 p.m. in Hong Kong, and that's and that's where you are at the moment. One of the rare occasions where I've actually caught you at home. Yes, exactly. And as you can see, I'm not here very often because it's kind of empty. <laughs> how, how many how many days of the year do you travel? How, how many how many nights a year do you think that you sleep in a hotel? Um, well, this year has been particularly um, sort of I guess more aggressive in that area. I think I've been. Uh, it's more about how many times, how many days have I been in Hong Kong? Oh, uh, really? It's probably been maybe two months so far for the entire year. So yes. So so otherwise, I've been basically uh, living abroad for the most part. <laughs> so listen, the last time we spoke, the mood was a bit uh, a bit more somber. It was like bear market ish. 
Um, you had the same smile, you had the same energy, you were like, look, we're just keeping our heads down, we're just building, we're just carrying on as if nothing's wrong, gaming will come back. And I think now, if you look at the res results of the last, I don't know, um, let's call it the last month, uh, I'm going to look at the last month, but that's just a, an indicator of what's going on. The first sector, or the sector that has exploded the most, is actually gaming. It's like, it's almost like, you know, everything's had a, a decent run, but gaming has exploded the most. So I think that the first question for me is like, why all of a sudden gaming? Why is, why did this sector jump quicker than any other sector? Well, I mean, first, first of all, you know, gaming is a very natural narrative. So when you think from a narrative perspective, the idea that gaming is going to actually um, bring sort of the, the first billion users into, into Web3 as a whole is one that's broadly sort of well understood uh, at this point. I remember back in 2018, 2019, when we spoke about it, a lot of people didn't understand it, but now I think people understand that from an entertainment and from a culture standpoint, it is a predominant digital culture, right? It's bigger than music and film combined, has more revenues. It's, you know, the, the, the classical gaming business is a $200 billion uh, revenue business and is continuing to grow. It's probably one of the few growth sectors outside of Web3, shall we say, that's continuing to expand. Um, and also, all, all you know, everyone around you is gaming. I mean, just look around, right? What are the numbers? 3.2 to 3.4 billion people in the world are gamers. Uh, and That's half, uh, as I said, just under half the population than, of the world. More than half of the world's internet. Um, because, of course, there is a part of the world that doesn't even have internet, right? So there's about 5.5 billion people online, and 3.2 to 3.4 billion are playing games. So there's still a growth path, but the vast majority of them are playing games. And what's interesting about games as well is that when you actually start playing games as a, as a kid, as a young age, you don't stop when you get older. Right? So you keep playing them and you sort of grow. And so that's one of them that's different about other industries where sometimes you kind of grow out of an industry, right? Like maybe you don't play with your dolls anymore, or you don't read certain kind of books. But with games, it actually just grows and, and, and matures in the space. Uh, and also we spend much more time online these days, right? In terms of some markets around the world, we spend actually between nine to ten hours a day, which is very, very significant. And that's actually more than our waking hours. And what do we do? We're not just online on Instagram, posting photos or, you know, looking at crypto banter. <laughs> right? We're actually also uh, playing, um, playing video games. And that's actually also our social, um, our social time. We make friends online playing games. We're no longer just, um, you know, and also we're watching, I mean, esports. So many people are actually, their, their channels where more people are watching um, esports than they're watching regular sports, right? So you can see that gaming isn't just an activity or an action. Um, it's an entire lifestyle culture. It's 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 what you know this generation is is all about. And as a result, right, most compatible to this idea of you know virtual currency in a game is not that far away from cryptocurrency. Owning your skin in a game is not that far away from NFTs. So the correlation is quite clear. Also, oh. gaming was one of the most funded categories in Web three for twenty two and twenty three. Yeah, we'll look at so that. It's not really. Yeah. We'll look at that in a second. I just want to. Um, I just want to say to you. Well, one of the things that you mentioned is, you know, when when we grow up, we don't stop gaming. So one of the uh, the ironic things that I saw, I saw Elon Musk tweeting the other day, and he was going to stream a live game play to his subscribers on X, and I thought to myself, like, here you have one of the most important people in the world. He's he's one of the richest people in the world. He's he's on Starlink. He's on Tesla. He's on you know he's pretty much on every groundbreaking project, and what is he doing in his spare time? He wants to stream himself playing a live video game to his audience. He didn't end up streaming it because he said work got too busy, but he did finish a, a level or something and he actually posted it and he said, and I got to a certain level. I wish I, I, wish I had the tweet to show you, but I think uh, that, that um, uh, 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 kind of um, cements what, what, what you're actually saying. Guys, I see that there's only, th I see there's only 300 likes. Smash the likes. Unless you don't like what Yat's saying, smash the likes. The, what I heard, and this is a rumor, this is a rumor, I heard that the more likes, the more excited he gets, and the more excited he gets, the more alpha he gives. That's that's it's like a, that, that's what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not. We'll see as the likes go up. That is what we'll see over here. You were saying so. Yeah, no. So I was just saying that. Look, um, gaming is now social proof as well. So if Elon's going and you know he couldn't just stream it, he still has to prove to his audience that he actually did play the game. That he's not just some kind of fraud pretending to play a game. Because playing games is cool as well, right? You know, we used to say, hey, this is the cool watch I have, or this is the cool clothes I have, or, or I hung out in this area, or, I, you know, I can, I, can, I can skateboard or something. That's kind of one element. But now, actually, how well you do in a game is actually perhaps more important or at least equally important in terms of your social status. So it's really sort of tied into to sort of everything that we do. And, and then all the celebrities do it as well. I mean, if you've seen some of the sort of fun, funny yes. um, sort of 
streamers like Snoop Dogg when he plays when he plays his first person shooters, whether it's Fortnite or uh, or so on, right? It's kind of hilarious to watch as he's there playing the game, smoking a J, making cracking funny jokes, but he's just having a good time, right? Didn't he say so he stopped just, smoking? That's... Didn't he say he stopped smoking joints the other day, or was that a meme? I don't that was know, a meme. Actually, it's, that was a meme. It's hard to imagine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, did this report shock you? Like, I saw this report, and it showed that the majority of funding that actually started in in the beginning. I think I think this the period is I'm not sure exactly the period, but the majority of 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 funding was actually in the gaming industry, followed by payments and then exchanges and wallets and then all the DeFi uh, protocols. But gaming was by far the biggest funded category. It doesn't surprise us whatsoever. Um, it was also the most funded category in 2022. And remember, it takes a lot of money and time to make really good games. And so what you're seeing now is that all these games that have been funded in the last two or three years, uh, and we ourselves, by the way, we funded over 140 game projects ourselves. So, you know, so obviously, you know, we're not the only party that's doing it. Some of the biggest VCs in the industry, like A16Z, for instance, are also heavy, heavy funders of, uh, of Web3 games. So all of that capital is coming together to create essentially the sort of next big wave. And there's many people who believe, including ourselves, of course, that this will be one of the most important um, sort of Web3 onboarders and most important value creation. Because remember this, even of those $200 billion that I just mentioned, $100 billion is actually spent on virtual skins and items inside the game but they're entirely rental in nature. Right? In other words, you mm. can't do anything. If you own a skin in Fortnite, that's all you can do. You can just show it in Fortnite. You can't sell it, you can't trade it, you can pass it on to someone else, you, know, you can't rent it or mortgage it, but as an NFT, you can now do that. Now, what happens when you have value formation like that and capital formation is that the value doesn't go up 10 to 20%, it goes up 10, 20, 30 times, which is why items in NFTs are so much more valuable than the equivalent game item because you have all of these additional network effects. That if, means if you already have a hundred billion dollar, just to finish off, if you already yeah. have a hundred billion dollar rental economy of virtual goods as existing, which is all decorative and fashion really related, what does it mean when you actually can own them? That already implies that we have the potential for a trillion dollar sort of you know item economy existing in game, gaming already if you move them into an actual sort of asset based economy, uh, as we see in the physical world. So, so I hear you. But if that's the case, why are the traditional games not embracing crypto? I know that this this week we had uh, the the Grand Theft Auto um, uh, uh, teaser or trailer, and everyone was like sitting back and going, "Let's wait and see. Have they have they incorporated anything NFT related into the game? Is this going to be like the first crypto incorporation into the game?" And then you know, the day later, it was like, "Oh no, well, it was a great trailer, but you know, it didn't actually it didn't actually they didn't actually yeah. integrate." That's because you're an American studio. So one thing to understand is that the big narrative difference between the US and Asia, for instance. In the US, because of what's happening, you know, in the regulatory framework, because of you know basically people being, you know, from our perspective in the US, it has a fairly strong anti-capitalist narrative, generally speaking. And so sort of crypto and NFTs represent basically a digital kind of capitalism. Many of the gamers in the US don't like it as a result of that, even if they don't understand it. Remember, when people criticize NFTs and crypto, uh, especially gamers in the US. It's a very emotional response. It's not a logical one, right? Like mm. at the end of the day, who cares if you own it or not? You know, there should be more value. But the way they react isn't logical. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why many of the US, actually most of the US game companies, all the big ones, are saying, hey, we're, we're not doing this. Um, you know, we don't like this. Um, and so there's being very careful. In Asia, on the other hand, it is actually very well adopted in terms of the biggest game studios, whether Square Enix, you know, company behind Final Fantasy and Tomb Raider, uh, you know, Sega, obviously everyone knows Sega. Uh, Nexon, NHN, Netmarble, Krafton, the creators of PUBG, they're all embracing Web3. They're all talking about NFTs. They're all developing uh, blockchain-based games. Um, you know, some, a number of Hong Kong-listed game companies uh, actually just recently bought you know, Bitcoin on their balance sheet, right? So it's a completely different, uh, different uh, sort of narrative. In Asia, uh, gamers love the idea of NFTs because they love the idea of ownership because they understand the benefit. And also, generally speaking, Asian markets are generally much more pro-capitalist, and so they are much more embracing to anything that has sort of this kind of potential. So that's really the difference. But if you're in the US, you will have that lens. I remember when, when ApeFest happened in FinTech week, just like a, a, month and, a month or so ago, many people from the US actually came to Asia, came to Hong Kong for the first time, and they just felt that energy. And they're like, oh my goodness, like you know, crypto and, and Web3, it's exciting. And I think for those of you who went to Token 2049 in Singapore this year, it's like, you know, what winter, right? Which is why people are building because they can see what's happening. Whereas if you're in the US, sometimes you feel depressed because the whole surrounding around you up until recently 
felt rather depressing. And sometimes that can affect you. I remember actually now you remind, you triggered my memory about when the last time you were here was, it was just after the big conference in Hong Kong and we were talking about the, we were talking about Asia versus the US and we, you, and we had just realized that actually in Asia there was, there's no bear market. And then I went to Token 2049 and that for me was like, well, you've, you've been telling us there's a bear market. There's, there was zero bear market at Token 2049. And that was for me the beginning of, of the bull. Um, before we get into more crypto related chat, I just you guys mentioned that you made a lot of investments uh, during the bear market. I think you, you mentioned a couple of hundred or something like that. Uh, so we did at least 70 or 80 investments uh, in, in this year so far. In total, we have over 450 investments. How many of them were in Asia versus how many of them in, were in the US? I'm, I'm kind of like, because I know that you guys are investing in very much, you call it Web3, but it's not, I mean, it's, it is Web3, but it's, I think you guys are very much in the niche of culture, gaming, NFTs, right. metaverse. Right. And I'm trying to understand from a, from a builder point of view, and specifically so that our viewers can start looking for projects in the right jurisdictions or in the right areas. What kind of like ratio, more or less, West versus East or West versus USA, just, uh, uh, East versus USA, just want to get a feel for, for the landscape. Uh, so generally speaking, one thing is you can't count out the US developers. I mean, they do really good stuff. They're just generally more low key, right? Just because of the fact that they're a little bit more sort of, I guess, concerned Maybe they're embarrassed to say we're building in Web3, even though they secretly are, are building stuff in it, I'm not sure. But generally speaking, uh, I would say US investments this year have obviously been a bit lower, um, but we still have made investments in US companies. Uh, and we've also, obviously, most of the investments have, however, taken place in Asia, uh, Middle Eastern region. Like, for instance, it's not a secret that we've been very active um, in, 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 in the MENA region. Um, you know, most recently, you know, NEOM, which is uh, sort of part of uh, in Saudi Arabia, has sort of made an investment as to help build out a Web3 strategy for them and web, um, sort of a, uh, and then of course Saudi is one of the biggest gaming markets in the world, generally speaking, one of the highest ARPUs uh, in the world. And of course, Turkey, well, here's the other thing. Turkey is, as we know, a very, very active crypto market. It's also one of the biggest gaming markets in the world, uh, certainly in the MENA region. So these things actually kind of correlate with each other. If you've been, for instance, uh, in Turkey recently, you'll see some of the biggest mobile game companies mm. and publishers actually also from there. Right. So there's there's a natural sort of, I guess, propensity uh, for the time being to be looking at opportunities, you know, outside of the U.S. just because they're, they're also more open to talk about it. Mm. Um, um, but I would so maybe maybe it's maybe two thirds of the investments have been sort of outside of um, outside of the U.S. But U.S. is still there. Like, you know, we're, we're not we're not uh, we're not sort of retreating. It's just less opportunity because it's just less of them. For the time so, being. so I mean, maybe now's a good time for me to let the cat out the bag. I swore, I swore that I wouldn't do this, but uh, you've just got me so excited and so enthusiastic. Um, so what Banter is looking to do in is use our in the game channel, which is our gaming channel, which is this channel, to actually run a gaming a crypto gaming conference, to, uh, which tops uh, Token Twenty Forty Nine next year. So on the twelfth of September, we want to run a crypto gaming. Uh, event that tops Token Twenty Forty Nine. You guys in the chat, let I me know if you guys would join us. Yeah, we would love to be there. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about specifically we're investors in crypto. Um, and I think everybody here, you know, we're all positive and we love gaming, but these guys want to know where to invest. And they kind of like saying, look, we've been seeing trends. We've been seeing narratives. Um, we've been looking at, we've been kind of breaking down the trends and narratives. So like we kind of said, look, we got, oh, let me just get yet back. So, sorry. So we got like, we got old coins. We got we got old coins in a, in in the new narrative of gaming. We've got new coins in the new narrative of gaming. We don't want to be in the old coins and the old narratives, or the you know we want to be here in the in the new coins, new narrative, and 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 old coins, new narrative. And so, with that in mind, like just where is the gaming? Where is the gaming sector right now? Like, is it first of all, let's look at chains. Is it Ronin? Is it Solana? Is it Avalanche? If if I want to be involved in a blockchain that is that is gaming centric because I'm a gamer and I'm not a DeFi guy. Kind of like where should I be looking? I'm, I don't know if you had sound guys. You hear me? So, oh, okay, okay, uh, we got you. Yeah, we got so you. Generally you. speaking, yeah, you know, when we're talking about um, sort of chains, you know, one of the one of the gaming chains that actually sort of um, really sort of started to emerge in a big way is uh, Ron, right? Um, um, sort of Ronin. Uh, because of its Axie Infinity history, and you know, one of the one of our actually it's, it's also one of our portfolios, a company called Pixels. They launched the game, and it, it took off. And it took off in part because it was a way to sort of address and access a market that Axie had already created, 
but you know, once once it went over to Ronin, it you know it has something like 100,000 daily active users. It's one of the fastest growing games right now in, in Web3, for instance. So so Ronin is definitely an interesting one. But of course, you know, Polygon itself has uh, and I'm sort of immutable has definitely sort of demonstrated that they themselves have uh, really sort of built out really, if you can say, sort of a gaming ecosystem. So you know, the team at Immutable um, has you know built out um, sort of a great pipeline of companies building on it. So I would say not um, you, you won't see the same results yet as Ron in terms of an actual application in the mm. same way. But uh, Mutable obviously has a good pipeline. Um, Polygon obviously has been very active in the space. And then you have newer ones out there uh, that are sort of building out, you know, the team at Mythical, right? And, 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 and sort of the Mythos Foundation, sort of, which is a very early, sort of uh, early, relatively early sort of chain in action. But obviously the teams behind it supporting it are sort of sort of a vet, veteran sort of uh, game developers and game creators. So you Tell have some a little of bit more. Tell me a little bit more. Sorry. It's the first time that I'm hearing a lot about the Mythos Mythos Foundation. Tell me a little bit more about the Mythos Foundation. Ronan, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of familiar with because that was the the chain, I guess that that Axie built, right? Because they needed to to have their own chain. Um, tell me a little bit more about Mythos and what they do. Well, I mean, I think the background on I mean, it's it's uh, in in terms of technology stack, I would say you know um, I don't think it's that differentiated. Uh, however, the big difference around this is the team behind it. Is um, you know uh, people who were involved in Mythical, obviously there, there's, there's part of that. Um, you know, so you know Blanco's fame, right? Uh, and of course, uh, a number of games that are basically now on the App Store, um, basically uh, actually are powered basically by, by Mythos uh, by, by Myth. Um, so these are sort of early um, uh, sort of uh, you know it's, it's not as well known, I guess, in mm -hmm. the Web3 universe because Mythos has been focused around adoption of Web2 users into Web3, right? So it's a bit different. Whereas Axie Infinity was very much a Web3 native gaming experience, but you needed a wallet to play and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the games that um, that Mythos has been operating on um, has been sort of much more sort of, I guess, a seamless um, sort of early experience. Uh, if you remember, um, one, you know, one of the early games um, uh, that was sort of uh, run was a game called Blancos, right? That was sort of one of the, one of the titles they launched. So they sort of cut their teeth basically um, on that. Uh, but I think the other thing also, you know, not just to look at sort of uh, gaming chains, but also other ecosystem tokens that actually I think are going to help drive gaming in a big way. So, for instance, you know, we recently became the largest validator um, for Ton. Ton, I saw uh, that. Sort of, so, yes. so I saw that. What was the logic there? I was actually I was actually looking at that announcement before. So, Ton is is that the Telegram chain, so to speak? Basically, you could say it's very tight. It's very closely connected to Telegram, obviously, um, and Ton Wallet basically. Is activating everyone on Telegram. You could do it right now to basically sort of activate a wallet and and you would go on board. But one thing that most people didn't realize is that actually you can build really powerful gaming experiences on uh, on top of Telegram through bots, for instance. Uh, and that's kind of actually what some of our studios have been doing. But they weren't able to monetize and they weren't able to leverage it because there was no ton system out there. And also for a while, Telegram didn't allow you to monetize. It didn't have a commercial model. But when you look at, for instance, places like China, something like WeChat. Actually, WeChat is a super app for everything. You play games from there. You can do your finance transactions. You can do all these things. Right? That's what WeChat is doing. And, you know what is you know what is the rumor around what what uh, Elon wants to do with X? He wants to turn it into a super app. That why why is he trying to sort of you know, why is he taking control of you know various handles like music and so on? Because he wants to actually turn X into a super app as well. So that's kind of the direction and for our mass onboarding. But Telegram has like 800 million users. And many of them are actually already sort of Web3 natives as well. So it seems to be a perfect place to go. So, so again, it, you know, it's, it's not something you would normally think of as a gaming chain in the traditional sense. Actually, but actually, it's actually a very now, good onboard. Now that, you, now that you bring it up, so it makes perfect sense. So Ton, it, Ton is a, let's call it a, it, it's not officially linked to Telegram, but it's kind of unofficially linked to Telegram. For those of you who, who've been here for a while, you'll know that Telegram was one of the first companies to raise a lot of money to build a blockchain. They abandoned their, their plans because I think they got threatened by the SEC saying you can't do this. And then they were, they, they, that was a big threat to them that they could have been removed from the App Store. And someone, someone went and continued to build this ton chain. And uh, there was an announcement that I think they created a wallet which, in, which can easily integrate into Telegram. And I think that gives them access to 800 million users. It works very smoothly. Yeah, you can just do, do that right now. You just basically sort of uh, call up the wallet bot and you basically are able to start using Ton. Um, mm. And you know they have an equivalent of NFTs with what they call digital collectibles, but it's basically the same approach. So it's 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 quite a powerful onboarder, especially for people who are not in Web three. Yeah, and, and there's is, I mean there's also a whole lot of games that have have or gaming platforms that have actually launched uh, building tele, Telegram 
type uh, games. So games that, that are launched on Telegram. To be uh, fully transparent, we actually invested in one called Wrecked Games. Uh, this is Wrecked Games over here. This is, uh, and, and what they are is exactly that. They're a game that you play specifically on Telegram. Uh, you, I mean, I'm not gonna click it here, but you can click here and you can actually play Wrecked and whatever else. I think this is gonna be a massive, massive, massive narrative. I think games that, that work off your Telegram connected to a crypto wallet must be like an unbelievable, unbelievable narrative. It is. And it comes a little bit from our experience of uh, how we saw mobile game development. Remember, the biggest mobile games that created this sort of gaming, initial interest in gaming, that then eventually moved onto the mid to hardcore gaming experience was actually casual games, right? The games that sort of made the, made the App Store, you know, wasn't Call of Duty. It was Angry Birds, it was Candy Crush, right? It was those type of games. And they actually brought in the hundreds of millions of gamers that then basically sort of, you know, trickled down into sort of the, 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 the more triple A type of experiences. Uh, and and actually, one of the big reasons we actually sort of went ahead and, and, and did this with uh, with with Ton as well, is because you know we happened to be involved in actually the biggest gaming platform on Telegram that was not yet on chain on Telegram, but now is moving to do work with them because of the fact that we have this opportunity, which is gaming, right? So gaming apps you can actually run from within a Telegram. You basically just call the gaming bot, and it has like I think sixty to eighty games, um, has millions of gamers on there right now. And, uh, and now the next step, obviously, is integrating with the wallet and, and doing some, some work around that. So that's kind of, uh, so and there's other sort of companies doing that as well. Tell me more about Gamey. Is Gamey a, a Web3 company or is there a token associated with it or, or is there no token associated? Yeah, so the token, the token is GMEE. -E. Um, GMEE. -E. Um, yes. Uh, and it's actually, uh, and, but you can actually, the best way to experience it is literally, you just go in, uh, you literally, you just go into the, um, I go into Telegram, and you can call it basically sort of uh, at uh, at gamey, and you can basically play multiplayer games together with your friends in Telegram. Actually, quite a few um, Web three projects on Telegram have been using it as a way to sort of validate airdrops to basically ensure that they're actual real users, uh, because there was no commercial model for a while, uh, and now there's sort of uh, there's now a commercialization path, uh, and and so that's kind of, that's kind of been sort of really interesting to see. Um, they already have millions of users on 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 Telegram at this moment in time, and obviously this has this opportunity with with uh, with now uh, sort of Ton has really enabled and opened up commercialization opportunities that weren't so, possible for Gamey and similar companies like Gamey. So is this is this is it right to call this these guys a gaming platform or gaming studio or gaming solutions company building solutions around so Telegram? They're solutions. They're, they're, yes, they're not. It's not solutions. They are a gaming platform and gaming studio, and they have something like 60 or 80 games in there at, at this moment in time. Wow. Um, and, and uh, you know, to us, this was like one of the perfect mass onboarding opportunities by basically sort of thinking of just, you know, um, just disclosure, we're involved in gaming, we're also involved in Telegram. So no, I mean, look, this, is, this is exactly what we want to hear, because if you guys are comfortable to be there, then we want to be there. This is not one of these, these not one of these things. I'm actually, I'm loving, I'm loving all this alpha, I like talking about specific projects. So tell me a little bit more, what are the, what are the, games, chains, applications, uh, platforms are you looking at? I mean, you've, okay, opened, so, up, you've I mean, opened up my eyes here. You've opened up, you got my, my heart <laughs> racing. You got my heart racing. You got their heart racing. I can see it because the subscribers are just going up. You can see it. You can see it here. The, the, the subscribers just been going up and up and up. Every, every time you say something, subs, you see subscriber go up, subscriber go up, subscriber go up, subscriber go up. So anyway, let, you anyway see, um, yeah. Not financial advice, but anyway. Um, <laughs> no, none of, anyway, none of this is financial advice. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just me and you talking. No one's even listening. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, I mean, so first of all, one of the projects that we are super excited about, have always been in the beginning and continue to be excited, obviously, is Sandbox. Sandbox is still going through alpha seasons, but really, what is the number one and number two biggest game in the world? It's Roblox and Minecraft, right? And so the Web3 equivalent, uh, bar none at this moment in time, obviously, is Sandbox. Uh, and they have basically all the brands building on top of it. You know, the primary reason why Sandbox hasn't been able to sort of continue to grow in the manner that people might have hoped is because they still have to launch in sort of alpha beta seasons. So the game is essentially not live all the time, but when it comes out, it's, it's also sell out a lot of people coming in. So we're really excited about where Sandbox is going. Um, the so other one that a lot of a lot people, of people a lot of people criticize Sandbox and kind of say that Sandbox is very much an old coin in in I mean you could say kind of like the old narrative of of like the metaverse you know like they, they called it metaverse yeah, initially I, I, I think that's just because I think a lot of people are just impatient and want to see this sort of in, in the next new thing while I understand that remember it takes many years to build a really good game I mean 
you just talked to me about Grand Theft Auto. You know, it was you know the game is almost like a decade in development, and then they put out a trailer. The whole world's excited, and it's like, oh, coming in 2025. <laughs> it's not it's not like coming next month, right? You know, and then everyone says, oh my goodness, these tokens take such a long, these token projects take such a long time, or what's happening with Star Atlas or Illuvium? And then you get, wait a second, have you heard this project called you know Grand Theft Auto? It's how many years has it been in development? It's still not out, right? So look, it takes a long time to make games, and so you, if you want to back a game. Uh, a, a new game token because it's uh, sort of you know exciting. Go ahead, of course, but I think the biggest issue is that it's the fact that it takes many years to make a good game. So if you want to back something that's actually fundamental, go for the projects that actually have the funding, have the have the, have the business models around it, and have really good product that when it comes out will be a success most likely or at least top. Okay. So that's 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 how I look at some of the examples. And the other thing that I would say is in a similar category would be ApeCoin. Now, ApeCoin is not actually, ApeCoin, I would say, is related to the culture aspect, not because specifically Yuga is adopting it, but also because many other game companies, including some of ours, are using ApeCoin, like with Rec League, for instance, or Mutant Hounds, or other, other. so they're more of sort of the decentralized, I guess, metaverse token ecosystem. And this one's interesting because it's really community-owned. Every proposal yes. is going through the DAO, everything's voted on, there's a degree of politics, it may be frustrating to some, but actually, it creates a really democratic process, and I think it's pr providing different levels of interest and excitement around that. So we're really interested uh, and excited about where ApeCoin is going, uh, and that's again one of those things where it, you know, it has has more, I guess, um, um, a more of a fundamental following in terms of, you know, because of the history with with uh, with uh, with the uh, board apes NFTs, but now with all different other kind of projects as well. So so we do like where that's going because it's a very strong community. Because I would say one more other thing. If you want to target an audience and you're making a Web3 game, it's not just about building a new community. It's also how do you actually address existing communities? If you make a game that supports ApeCoin, everyone who's holding ApeCoin actually becomes your customer. You know, Sandbox, you know, one of the reasons why uh, small indie game studios continue to make projects on Sandbox is because when they launch NFTs in, in gaming experience, they make revenue. They make more revenue on Sandbox than they would make launching an indie game on the App Store and Google Play because tokens themselves are platforms. These are customers. This is access to a, a user base that wants to buy a product, right? So, so it's not just about you know the utility of the game in itself. Tokens uh, that embed culture actually are a part of sort of um, um, a customer base that yeah, that you can reach. Right? And, so, and that's so, that's, uh, that's what we're good. So, Sandbox is your equivalent of of Roblox experiment in in our game. ApeCoin for me in, is the it, yeah. yeah, and then uh, for me. Generator. Yeah, so for me, ApeCoin is the is the culture the culture play. If you wanna if you want a crypto culture play, call it an NFT culture play, but I think it's way more than an NFT now. It's a movement. Uh, no, I no, think no, no, it's not. Yeah, it's way more. I mean, ApeCoin is actually bigger. ApeCoin is bigger than sort of I guess specifically board apes in and of itself, right? And they're obviously separated projects. Yes, of course, of course. For me, for me, ApeCoin is probably the best culture play. If you wanna if you wanna take a bet on culture in in crypto. And specifically in gaming and NFTs and, and that kind of world, ApeCoin is 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 kind of like where you want to stack your chips. I think that's that for me is the is the one. Yeah, um, and then the other one that I think uh, we we shouldn't underestimate. Again, I mean, people might say, "Oh, this is an old token," but actually, it's building the foundation of uh, uh, sort of the, the new seasons, um, which is uh, you know Axie Infinity. Right? I, I mean, was about to say. I was about to say you're going to say Axie Infinity. Yes. Yes. I, and you know, Axie Infinity built the foundation of what is Ronin and is what now with something like Pixels is able to bring hundreds of thousands of users in. And actually, after Axie relaunched basically some of their titles, they're back to sort of hundreds of thousands of users. So it's again, you know, I think people sometimes don't want to sort of uh, maybe it's easier to sort of move on to the new thing. But again, they have years of experience. They're well funded to basically build those next generations of good quality titles um, and 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 uh, and have a user base, a loyal user base. Uh, that, uh, that that loves the experiences, and maybe just because Axie isn't for you doesn't mean that it isn't for other type of players. Is I mean, Axie, I remember is, back in the is, early days. But is Axie a fun game though? Like, is Axie Infinity is it a fun game, or were people playing it because they were making money? Like, I tried to play it a few times. I didn't have fun playing it. I got to be honest. Like, and I, I guess they were first. They were first, and so it was. You know, I, they I showed it. the first model. Yeah, yes. they showed the first model. Uh, they've innovated on it. I would say that obviously in the market that was 21, um, it was actually very much driven obviously by the play to earn component. Because also remember, this is the COVID times. So actually the need to actually sort of make money was actually much more important, relatively speaking, to you know it being, for instance, entertainment. 
But actually, people who are playing Axie now or Pixels or even Gamey as an example are actually people who are playing for entertainment. You can make money. That's one element of it. But that's not the only element around it. And uh, and we see this effect today. It's, it's, it, and by the way, I just wanted to sort of, you know, I remember back in the days when, when mobile first came up, many of the sort of more traditional gamers were like, I'll never play a mobile game. That's not fun at all. Meanwhile, Candy Crush and 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 uh, and the Angry Birds were basically just took the market by storm. But many yes. people were saying it's not fun, it's too simple. What is this? It's cute, but whatever, right? And you know, in some ways, I would say actually, the first generation of Axie Infinity was kind of like our Angry Birds moment, uh, which sort of showed the way, but isn't its final moment. And now it's iterating and growing from there, right? And, and Angry Birds became obviously a franchise, and I would say Axie Infinity is kind of evolving into that area as well. Remember, these also are companies that are incredibly well funded. If you look at their treasuries that are public, um, and they're also generating revenue. So this is again um, not uh, not to be compared with you know like struggling studios that don't have any money. These, yes. these companies are doing very very well. Right? You know what it is. You know what it is. It is that the market is more harsh on the old projects. So like I, I said it yesterday on my show, I said if you're an old project, you're judged much more harshly than if you're a new shiny thing. It's like if you're a, an old project. You, you, you've got to be judged on actual traction. And if you're a new project, you're judged on promise. And so like, it's probably much easier to go out there and promise the world because you know, that's, it's much easier when you've actually got to show traction, then that's when, that's when, you know, you got to separate the men from the boys. And I, I think that that's where Axie is right now. The market's treating it and saying, look, you got to show traction. If you want us to give you a high valuation, you got to show us that, that you're getting real traction. Correct. Uh, but I mean, on that note, I would say that if you are, you know, if you if you want to basically just sort of, let's call it, you know, experiment and, and try new things and, and go for new projects, go ahead, of course. But these are the one, these are many of these projects are the ones that say something will happen in six months or one year or two years. And often they, they don't uh, or it's, uh, there's a disappointment as to, you know, there's a delay. Let's just put it this way. It's, it's not necessarily malintent. It's just the fact that it takes time to develop these projects. It takes, it takes time. Right? It takes it time. Takes time. I- as you said, the, grand, the GTA trailer was exactly the, the, the point. They played the trailer in 2023 and the game comes out in 2025. It takes time. If a crypto company exactly. played their trailer, in, I think Star Atlas actually played their trailer in 2018. Was it 2018? And that's the, I think they're still building their game. So I think that that's what people need to get into oh, perspective. Yeah, Gaming is going to take much in, longer. I mean, in gaming, this is not that unusual. I mean... Um, I'm not sure if you know a game called sort of, I think it's a uh, Starship uh, or Star Citizen, right? That is a game that has been crowdfunded. Uh, it's not on blockchain, has been crowdfunded to the tune of, I think, $400 million over the last 10 years. And it's still not live, right? but people own starships and they play around with them and they're That's really excited about it, right? Just, just search it online, you will find it's kind of exciting and interesting to see. But my point is, is that actually this, this sort of thing that we're talking about, sort of games that are going to be built in the future and that are sort of, you know, being built out and supported by the community and basically in this case funded by the community actually is not that unusual. It's been happening for decades in the gaming industry already. Yeah, yeah. All right, give me some more. Give me, I'm, I mean, I'm drowning in alpha here, which is great. I'm, I'm drowning in alpha. The likes are almost at a thousand likes. There's 3,000 people watching us live, which is, these are huge numbers here. People are drowning in alpha. People are drowning in alpha. Uh, so. Yeah, not, not, not sure about that. But okay, so a couple other things that sort of we really like. Uh, and so this one is probably a little bit more left field, but I think it's worth mentioning, and that's Open Campus EDU. And what EDU now, so when you look at that one, that's an interesting one because actually it allows actually uh, educational content creators to create educational games, which they then can turn into NFTs, which are then basically sell on basically to uh, to uh, other um, other uh, sort of you know I guess um, uh, uh, parties. But what's interesting is that so unlike right, how, other how, games, how does it work? Just just walk me through this. I've never I've never seen it before. I'm I'm, I'm going to confess. How does this actually work? Okay, so EDU uh, basically it's an educational token infrastructure. But actually, what uh, what happens here is I give you an example. Of what you can do you, a teacher uses the platform. You can go to uh, a, a tiny tap. Um, you can you can go online and you can make it like an educational game. That game basically can be turned into an NFT. Um, and it generates revenue from people using it, right? Because you learn English in a gamified manner. Like, you know, imagine like yes. Duolingo, for instance. Yeah. Yes. But it's gamified. It's kind of fun and interesting. Uh, but actually, the creator of that content is maybe some teacher that might be in Bangladesh or a teacher in America, and they would charge for the service. And they're making money this way. And most recently, we just sold uh, some publisher NFTs, and teachers basically literally made the equivalent of, you know, like, you know, three to six months of their a- annual salaries uh, on the sale of these NFTs. Uh, basically through through EDU, which is quite exciting. And of course, the owners of these NSTs now end up owning the yield 
of what that content means. So this is an interesting example of how NFTs aren't just for entertainment, but actually provide direct income because you have an association with the ownership of these goods, for instance. Um, and um, and you know it's a it's a platform. One thing that most people don't understand is like in some ways education is gamification, right? I mean you know Twitch is uh, and, and 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 YouTube are as much educational platforms as they are for entertainment. But education is a five trillion dollar space. It's even bigger than gaming. Yes, um, and people don't feel so as guilty. People yeah. don't feel as guilty about education as they do about gaming. You know, like if you're educating yourself, it's it's cool. You know, my wife as as, well, as, as your parents are happy to let you do <laughs> exactly. So it's, uh, that was I was about to say. My wife hates it when the kids are playing games on the iPad. But if you tell her that it's an educational game and the kids are learning mathematics, get as much as you want. That's right. Do you know what the biggest YouTube video of all times is? Uh, is it not Gangnam Style? No. Baby Shark. It's Baby Shark. Baby Shark. And what is Baby Shark? It's an educational video. <laughs> and, and, and just FYI, a Tiny Tap and, and Open Campus basically did a deal with, uh, with, uh, with Baby Shark. Oh, wow. Uh, you can find it online. Yeah, but my, my point I'm just trying to illustrate is it's the most viewed content. Is Boy, and talking about the ETF, oh, hold on, hold on the real hold explosion on a second. I, I has actually just... happened. You know, like a lot of people, a lot of people don't have kids, right? And if you don't have kids, you, you don't know the song, right? But, but if you do have kids, if you do have kids, then let me tell you that you know the song that you know. The, I mean, I just want to show you the, the numbers here. 13 billion views in seven years. 13 billion views in seven years. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Hold on. Baby shark, baby shark, 13 billion views, on, on not, not that version, but 13 billion views on that song. 13 billion views. When you have kids, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, give me some more. Yeah, my heart is racing. The likes are going up. The subscribers are going up. We're, we're clearly doing something right here, my friend, today. We, today, I think we've nailed it. We've nailed it. What, what else are you guys <laughs> looking at? Look, I mean, uh, most recently, we've been looking at uh, and, and supporting Root, right, uh, which is the Futureverse, guys. It's, that's more of a new, I guess, in the category of new shiny tokens. I suppose. Which, what, what's uh, it called? Root, R-U-U-T, right? Okay. Um, what? And Root is basically an interoperability layer for uh, allowing, basically, the interoperability of game items or NFTs between other sort of, you know, uh, chains and, and metaverses, as it were. So that's kind of an interesting one. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a very recent launch. Uh, something that's um, also do, doing quite well. And, you know, the guys uh, behind it are basically um, veterans in the space. If you've heard of Futureverse, uh, more sort of as an NFT project. Um, now, I think the other thing I think that's worth mentioning as well is that when you're actually interested in, let's say, you know, understanding where the gaming or just sort of culture areas, actually, it doesn't typically start with the token. It starts with the NFTs, right? Remember, if you were board ape holders, what it, did, what it meant for you. Or maybe remember what, what, what it meant when you were holders of things like, you know, like, like captain's NFTs or, you know, various other sort of projects. So, you know, one other thing that I think some people might not, not, not know because they're looking at fungible tokens is that actually the non-fungible token space has actually expanded quite a bit. The last 30-day trading volume is now over a billion dollars. I saw that. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, actually, it's amazing, right? I, I mean, have to show you, I, have to, you, 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 I do some preparations before these shows that I don't come in here completely. Oh, okay. And I, it was one of the things that I'd noticed. I, I, I looked at NFT trading across uh, platforms and I realized that actually the NFT market is, is, is completely waking up. Tell me what mm -hmm. I do about this because, because great, I see the NFT market waking up. I don't know how to get into this market. I don't know what to buy. I don't know where to buy it. What do I buy the exchanges? Do I buy, do I buy the picks and shovels? Do I, do I start looking for collections? Help me. Help me navigate this place. So, I mean, first of all, generally speaking, when you are entering the NFT space, you're really, really entering deep into the culture. So when you're buying into fungible tokens, you're kind of one level higher up, shall we say, in terms of the broader space, right? Um, but actually, if you're in the sort of NFT space, you know, it's kind of like the difference of, you know, buying basically like a, I guess, um, like a currency into a market or like a, like a, like maybe like a like a like a REIT into a, into a, into a city versus specifically buying the real estate yes. uh, or the house or the apartment in the place, right? So you got to understand that, and either you know someone or you you like kind of, kind of thing that the projects are working on. So an example would be, for instance, um, you know when you're um, uh, when you're looking at the NFT space, you have to actually go inside the Discord and meet the people. You have to look at the holding patterns, like how distributed is it, how many NFTs are there on sale, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I tell people usually is that buying an NFT is like buying a car. 
Like you don't just go in and just go into a car store and say, let's buy a car, let's, let's just do that. I mean, some people do maybe, because you know they have nothing better to do and they're just swimming on cash, maybe because it just did really well. But but for the most part, we don't just you know go in and just buy a car just, just for, 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 for fun. Um, so it's so the same thing. You've got to kind of study and understand that space um, better. Uh, and I think the other thing also is that with NFTs, you can, um, it's something that has to appeal to you. Just kind of like when I talk about yeah. cars as well. You don't just buy any car that does the job. You want to buy a car that's either shiny. So it's or like it's like buying or art. It's, it's it's like buying art. You got to go and yes, find. Yes, but there's utility. There's utility, right? You can yes. use it in a game. So basically, sure. if you like the game, or if you like the potential of the game, or you like the narrative that's coming with with that project, um, or you like the team behind it, then you buying the NFT isn't just simply you know for implied value. Yes. You want to back them. You like the creator. You want to support them. And if you and 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 you and you think that your contribution can actually help grow that ecosystem, right? And so a number of these projects that have done really well recently, I mean, obviously, um, you know, Pudgy Penguins is an example where, yes. you know, it's actually risen much more than, I guess, you know, I guess fungible tokens. The other one, for instance, is, is one of our own, which is Mochaverse. I mean, one month ago, Mochaverse's floor price was about half an ETH, and now it's about 3.2 or 3.3 ETH in the space of just 30, 30 odd days, for instance, right? So it's an example, basically, where you can sort of get involved, um, basically, with projects. Uh, and then just sort of um, see what potential there is from that. And Mochaverse is an example where, you know, that's basically a way in which we're trying to just basically build out decentralized ID. You kind of think of it as like a steam of, um, you know, a, ste a sort of a, a steam, a decentralized steam, uh, where basically we can publish our games through and also you get governance in sort of our, our ecosystem. Uh, and, you know, I think we just recently passed 100,000 uh, sort of uh, unique identifiers. So it's 100,000 sort of directly registered and verified users in, in wow. the platform. Um, but it's underpinned by basically uh, underpinned basically uh, and that was less than maybe three weeks since launch and it's underpinned basically by by our nft collection which is the mochaverse ones which you can buy and what is the floor price today of of, of mochaverse of uh in of the nft About collection 3.2 ETH, i okay. think roughly um but uh when we minted it it was 0 0.138 wow and how long ago did you mint them well minting was uh i think six seven months ago um, and then the floor price up until 30 days ago was probably about half an ETH, for instance. But by the way, the, you know, the growth in NFTs is not unique just to Mochaverse. Um, yes. it's, it's been throughout, throughout the space, it's done really well. And of course, the other area uh, that's done really well is, of course, in ordinals, right? So before, everything was very much focused around um, basically uh, um, NFTs around Ethereum, ERC-721s for the most part. But now it's basically expanded on other chains, most notably basically inscriptions and ordinals. So, so the whole space is becoming just much more diversified and much more, um, uh, much more interesting, frankly speaking. I mean, if you look at if you look at the, this is the last month across the top hundred coins, and if you look at the big movers, so Bank is the biggest. You could say that Bank is meme NFT culture and Audi, which sure. is which is exactly that, and then Beam, which is Merit Circles, uh, Merit Circles chain. You know, so like. You can see what's going on here. You can see the narrative. Yeah, we've got two more minutes. So in two more minutes, give me one more bit of alpha. Let's close today on a on a high alpha note. Let's, let's close on a high alpha note. Uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, you, you're missing out on this alpha. You never know when I'm going to come. So if you don't have your subscribe, if you don't subscribe and the bell notification ain't on, you're going to miss this alpha. Now, people that bought some of the coins we spoke about in the beginning of the show are already cashing out. So you need to subscribe. <laughs> 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 that's that's, that's, uh, that, that's not typically uh, that's not typically what I would do, right? But anyway, look, I mean, I think I've gone through a whole list of projects yes. already. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, uh, look, I think the one thing I would say is there's so many incredible games that are coming out. You know, like it's, as I said earlier, like we've invested in over 140 of them. So many cool things. But I will say one thing. You know, less about the token, but more about the projects in terms of quality that's already out there. Many people talk about, oh, Star Atlas, Illuvium, yes, exciting stuff, but they can't actually see it. Take a look at a game like Phantom Galaxies. Uh, yes. That's a Web three game. Yes, and the quality there is actually there, and you can play it. And you know, it's it's maybe in a niche category of sort of mechs and robots, but it's an example of what you can start doing, right? And or Rec League, for instance. So you see very high quality games already coming, and they're just going to get better. Right? And and the moment will come where you know the regular gamer is going to play a Web three game. He's not even going to know or care that it's Web three. He's just going to have fun because it's just an amazing game. And then he'll sort of it, I didn't realize, wait a second, I'm actually able to potentially make money or I can actually trade them, actually really own them. And through that onboarding, you know, they're going to start learning about sort of what it means to own digital assets and actually gain some financial literacy. And remember, the fully Web3 onboarded user is one who has financial literacy. 
who is able to make some kind of investment decisions, who has an idea about the money and value, which most of the world is not. So bringing someone to Web3 isn't just about having a wallet. It's about making them financially included, which then gives more value to the entire ecosystem. And this is also one of the reasons why we're also pushing education. Because I was about to say, that's, and if you can educate them related. and all they related. can have fun, if you can educate them and they can have fun at the same time, you've closed the loop. Yeah, listen, I've yeah. done probably 10 interviews with you in my life. I want to tell you, categorically, I want to say to you, this has been the most fun one that I've ever done with you. I love, I love, I love this DJ side of you. I love this specific side of you because now I feel much smarter. Guys in the audience, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. Um, sir, thank you so, so, so much. I'll, um, and we need to have this again and again and again and again. Someone says, <laughs> Sebastian says, he's drowning in alpha. Help. You see, this is what we've done to them today. This is what we've done. Yeah, my friend, thank you so, 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 so much. So much love for you from the fam. Thank you for your time. I know it's 11 o'clock at night in Hong Kong. So thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. Wow, talk about drowning in alpha. I'm, I'm, wow, 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 wow. And if you really, 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 really want to drown in alpha, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? So if you go to the main channel now, no, don't go now, give, like, give it one second. We are running another show, okay? We are running another show in, on the main channel in, when are we starting? We're starting in, in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, we're going to be running another high alpha show. I have to talk to you about what's going on in Solana. I have to talk to you about what's going on in Cardano. I have to talk to you about what's going on in the ETH ecosystem and, the, and, and stuff like that. So go to there. But before you leave, don't leave yet because there's a lot happening here still. So number one, if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Honestly, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Do you want more of these things? Just subscribe. Come on, let's do this. Let's get in the game to 80,000. Uh, Mr. Hustle is going to do a show for us later today. You're only going to get it. You're only going to get it if you subscribe to the channel. Also, guys, please, if you haven't already taken out a, 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 a VPN, listen, D don't take it for me and don't even take NordVPN. Just go get yourself a VPN. The last thing that I want is that you guys will lose your money um, that you guys will lose your money, make a lot of money in this bull market and lose it to a hack or lose it to the authorities getting your IP address or lose it to anything else. Just go and mask your IP address. It costs you $3 a month and you support our channel. I will see you guys again in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, we meet again. I'm gonna go, to, it's, it's, it's simple. I'm gonna go for a, a pee. I'm gonna drink something and then we're gonna sit down again and we're gonna continue with this alpha on the other channel. I'll see you guys in 15 minutes. Until then, trade well, my friends. Bring up!